Hey everybody, Brett here, and I'm back with some more Kingdom Rush Frontiers. So, we're going to pick up where we left off last time, and I know I was kind of struggling uh, in the last episode. I wasn't feeling very well, and I hope that didn't come across too poorly in my videos. I still wanted to put out content. I didn't want it to suck, and I didn't want you guys to think I wasn't having any fun, but yeah, I just wasn't, wasn't feeling my best. So, towards the end there, I just felt like I needed to sign off and save it for another day. So, that's what we're going to do. Today we are going to jump into the Makwa Urku campaign map and we're going to knock it out. Okay, so I did a little testing on my own um, after I got off yesterday and had some time to chill out and relax. Um, I tried it again with Alric. I think I figured out a nice opener to help us beat it. And he ended up inadvertently kind of leveling, so I put some points into Flurry and Swordsmanship. And I think we're going to use Cronin. We're going to try and get Cronin to level six, uh, 7, rather. And this is a pretty good uh, map to do it on. Lots of uh, just kind of melee-focused squishy boys that he's very good at taking down. So I can read the campaign blurb one more time. This says, Cast your gaze upon the ancient city of Makwa Urku, home to the sinister man-eating tribe that has become our enemy. Hear the battle drums and dark shamanic chanting that emanate from its mountaintop perch. Feel the heat from that dangerous volcano. This is our place, or this is their place of power. To pursue our dreaded foe, we must first get through the Makwa forces surrounding the city. Good thing our dwarven engineers and their gnomish tinkerer cousins have cooked up a mighty mechanical surprise. So, we are going to try and make use of the new artillery piece Big guy coming through. and something I remembered from all the years that I played this game is that there's a pretty cool little um, feature of this map something that happens that we can stop that makes it much much easier and it involves some pretty key placement of an early crossbow fort so if you look at this range here we're able to hit kind of this entire pathway and that's going to become important as we move forward and we're also going to place a axe thrower tower here and we're still going to place a militia barracks down here so that spins all of our gold nicely and let's bring Cronin down here so we'll have savage warriors here and then savage hunters here they'll do their ranged attacks we'll probably drop fire and use reinforcements there and we'll use Cronin summons to block up this path so what I was having trouble with is I was going quantity over quality, but I think this is a map where you want to start with quality first and see how it goes. And with Cronin down there, I can't imagine us leaking, so we'll just use our reinforcements top to stop up these savage hunters. And yeah, I mean he just has so much AoE, he has self healing, he has his boars which do decent damage. And all I need them to do is hold those guys up. Let them fight boars. Let the uh, the falcon do damage. It does decent damage. I think it's only tier 2. So that's pretty good damage. And we want to make sure we're always calling early. There's a lot of extra gold to be gained for us by calling early. And we're going to look to get barracks in this position ASAP. And we're essentially just placing these guys here to die. We just need some targets for them. So that they kind of walk down this path right into all the DPS of our two towers up top. We're going to get ourselves an adept tower as soon as we can. And we're going to drop fire there as well. Call early to get the reduced cooldown. And we're looking, we're looking where we need to place. And we're doing fine. Just call them down there. And we want to kind of quickly get a wizard tower if we can. You'll notice these are the high armor producing dudes. So they're giving all of their buddies high armor and an AoE. If we kill them, they lose the buff. But that's kind of easier said than done without magic damage. And Cronin himself doesn't do the best damage. But once we upgrade this, the range will be sufficient to uh, start hitting these fights. 
Let's summon some dudes here. And we're lucky we now have another Reign of Fire. And we've almost got a Necromancer Tower, which is what we want. So here's part of the mechanic. The Savage Brute with the Princess. He tries to... He stays here for a second. And then he tries to go and throw her into the Volcano. So Cronin died there. That's unfortunate. He died to all of these Savage Hunters. But we're going to kill off that wave. And now we have some skeletons to help us defend. And we're holding. It's kind of close. But having these skeletons here will certainly help. We can even play something like a crossbow fort in this position. And we'll make another little stop here whenever we can. Gotta be calling early. Gotta be using our cooldowns appropriately. And look at this kind of juicy target for this rain of fire we're about to have. We just don't want Cronan to be the one that eats it. And then we can drop our reinforcements top. So that gave us a ton of gold. And we're certainly going to spend it. Not quite in range. And we want to get another Necromancer Tower there. So being able to kill the Savage Brute before he makes it to the end is pretty important. And we're going to need... Oh, Cronin's dead, actually. Oh, Lord. Okay, close one. But we're going to drop some fire. Take these guys out. Get our Necromancer Tower. Losing Cronin there was not smooth move, but that's what these dudes do. Lots of damage, and that's why Cronin, Cronin can be a rough pick sometimes just because he, uh, he doesn't have that range. But this AoE stun is quite nice. Let's summon some guys real quick. And we can get another Necromancer Tower there. The more skeletons we have blocking the path, the better. So we've already made it a bit farther than we did just the other day. And we're going to drop some fire, hoping to hit these high armor buddies and knock them out. We're also getting air units, which is worth noticing. So I think we should take advantage of this time to get ourselves maybe a crossbow fort in this rear position. Give ourselves a little bit more anti-air coverage. And there we go, we managed to take him down again. And we got an achievement for that when I did it in my little practice run. I didn't go all the way to the end, I just kind of went a bit into the level. And I want to try and show off the new tower. And I was thinking of putting them both here, getting two of them and placing them there. They're also very good anti-air towers as well. Which is rare for an artillery unit to be a good anti-air tower. But these ones are... So a new enemy. These guys are blood tricksters and they can resurrect their dead comrades. And they're pretty strong themselves. 640 HP and they do a lot of damage. So you want to kill them early if you can or else they'll uh, they'll overwhelm your ground forces. Just kind of what they're doing now. Once this is something like a dwarf tower in both these positions, we won't have to worry about all the weak little guys. And they do a ton of damage, 30 to 50, that's huge. Yeah, you really want to prioritize them if you can. Let's drop some fire on them. Call early, get the reduced cooldown. And let's get the Dwarf Tower first. That way we can stop worrying about all these, like, hordes of units coming right at us. So we need to get to 400. Luckily we have a ton of skeletons, so the skeletons are slowing down these riders and making it so that they, uh, they're they stopping and taking damage from our falconers, which is nice. Let's kill these two blood tricksters if we can. Yeah, Cronin dies again. Which sucks. We need some AoE right here. Pretty bad. We could use another dwarf tower in this position. Trying to avoid having to buy something. Buy more plots of land, rather. So he already made it to level 7. That's good. That was kind of the point of this. 
I'm continuously calling early. It's a pretty dangerous little blob here. But I think we're going to kill them and get a ton of gold. And now we're very close to getting our dwarf tower. Which should be able to cover us against all of the hordes. And once this is upgraded with its tier 3 falconer, which I hope it will be. So them having physical and magical resistance is pretty rough. But now we get furnace blast. And that should clear that up for us. And my little falcon buddy did not kill them. That's unfortunate. So we're going to leak here. Just barely. Stood shield should uh, still be three stars if we don't leak anymore. Okay, Cronin looks like he's going to die, but I think we can kill him. We're targeting the wrong stuff, which is unfortunate. We need to just sit here and let our tower do the damage. Oh, man. So calling early there ended up killing us, or lessening the amount of stars we could get. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So not my uh, finest move there. We need a little bit more anti-air, I guess. Yeah, I may need to pick and choose better when I call early and when I don't. I think that was certainly the issue. And also, I don't like. I don't, I don't think Cronin's very good. Even our, uh, our pirate captain would have been able to shoot those guys out of the air. And that's why I value heroes that can shoot air so much higher. We'll give ourselves some footmen back here. And now we can finally get the battle mecha. So achievement unlock specialist. And I'm going to show you guys in just a second what makes the battle mecha so strong. And it's the wasp missiles. We'll get tier 1. And then we'll get tier 2. They're pretty much an auto an auto get. So you'll see here they're, they're like homing. And they do ridiculous damage. And we'll put them up front here. I'm, a, I don't even, I'm tired of babysitting him, honestly. He's kind of uh, getting on my nerves a little bit. Let's increase our range on these. Now they'll all be able to shoot down into this area and we'll have much less chance of flyers bypassing us, which is nice. We can also get another Necromancer down here. And there we go. So now we'll have even more skeletons to gun them up. And no unit actually fights this mech. It's just kind of invisible to the enemy. But it does a lot of damage. You can also give it an oil spill, which slows down units on the ground pretty heavily. Which is a nice ability. So I think now we're going to get another one. And check out those missiles. It's kind of insane. So yeah, I think unfortunately this is going to be a two star thing. We, we barely leaked on the air. That happens. You know, if I was playing for fun just by myself, I would probably stop and go back and get it done right. But now we just want to get the second tier of the wasp missiles. And they just circle until they have a target. And I mean, they also do decent damage. 28 to 61, it's kind of short range around the walker. But they hit air, which is a big deal. And we can get one level of the oil slick. What's it called? Waste disposal. Just to have that as an option. 
now, I think we're going to get another one in this position here. We'll call early. I think at this point we've got the level pretty much in hand. Build three mechas on any one stage. Pretty sweet unlock. And we're getting a ton of gold from killing all these very high tier units. Cronin's unfortunately missing out on a lot of experience, but that's kind of just how it is for him. Would be nice also to get more axe throwers so that we can uh, use their totems to take away a lot of the advantage that these dudes have. So the nice thing about these mechs are that they are invulnerable. So units like these savage hunters, they don't they don't mean anything to it. And they're just constantly spamming out those missiles that travel all over the map. And I mean, just look how much gold we have at this point. It's kind of insane. We can honestly afford to get ourselves some stronger warriors. And I think that's going to be it. That's wave 15 of 15. So not the smoothest run I've done, but um, still a fun one. I mean, just check out the rainbow colors we got going on with all the different buffs and debuffs. That's why these are so important. And we can increase the duration of their totems greatly. They'll lose that armor, they'll lose that magic resistance, and then they just get wrecked from there. We can also increase the strength of our furnace blast and get the core drill to help us take down the gorillons if, you know of course if this was to continue that's where we would end up building it earn 45 stars nice so it's only two stars i'll probably go back in my free time and get the third star i don't want you guys to have to worry about that but you want to get the third star because if you don't you can't take advantage of the heroic or iron mode challenges and now we have another big battle it's going to be a boss battle uh, coming near the end of this stage and it's the temple of sakura and it's pretty sweet and there's some cool little uh flavorful easter eggs in there too which i can't wait to show you so we have two stars we can't get an upgrade we needed three stars to get flagoration but despite dying over and over and over again um cronin gained like a full level there so we can level him up and he has the ability to heal himself but I think we're just going to get some stronger boars and a better stampede. Yeah, and then we'll probably switch him out. I don't want him for this last stage. I think honestly he kind of makes things difficult. I could see using either Nivus, Captain Blackthorn, or Alric. If I had more people watching this series, I would say, hey guys, you know, tell me in the comments which one you want me to use. But, you know. If you are watching this and you do have an opinion, let me know. And I'll, if I see it before I do my Let's Play tomorrow, then I'll take that into account. You know, whichever one you want to see more of is one that I can play for sure. So for now, I'm going to leave it on Captain Blackthorn. He's the one I'm kind of like real into right now. And I think that's going to be it for me today, guys. It's a short video, uh, but that's because I played Artifact today. I played the new DLC for Battle Brothers today, which I'm super hyped about. And, you know, as my channel gets a little more attention I'm kind of having to focus on different games and that's kind of how I play in my personal time too you know I don't really get bogged down with any one game I have about maybe 30 games that I love and I kind of bounce back and forth between them so it's kind of perfect for having a variety style YouTube channel um, but I try to get to everything within a day or two and tomorrow is going to be another artifact uh, draft day I'm going to be doing more in my Battle Brothers series I might come back and do another short video here in Kingdom Rush Frontiers. And, you know, who knows? Might do some other stuff too. I need to play some more Total War tonight. And I'm going to get, hopefully, some good matches recorded that I can then go ahead and cast for you guys that are interested in that sort of thing. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. My name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. I hope you enjoyed this quick Let's Play. Once again, the level Makwa Urku. That's kind of fun to say. And I will see you in the next one, guys. Take care. And have a good day.